In today's video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to utilize SocketCan in Linux to effectively write my own can dump program. SocketCan is an industry standard when it comes to interfacing with CAN devices on Linux machines. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. If you've watched some of my other videos, you might be familiar with this setup that I have here. On the top, I have an ESP32 with a CAN transceiver connected to a breadboard. Then I have two cables that go into a DB9 to USB micro converter. On the ESP32, I have some firmware transmitting simple strings, and I'm going to be logging through the DB9 connector. So the way we can bring the CAN interface up is by typing sudo IP link setup can type bitrate 500k. So now if we repeat it, we can see that the interface is up. So now to show you that I do have CAN transmitting from the microcontroller to the VM, we can type in CAN dump CAN zero. And you can see that we are receiving data from the CAN ID 012, it has eight bytes, and this is the payload. So now let's jump into some code. I'm gonna create a file called customcandump.c. To get started, I'm gonna include some header files. So I've included some headers here, uh, notably stdio.h, string.h, uni.std.h, which is for read and close functions on sockets. We have the network interface.h, which is uh, useful because we're going to be using the interface request data structure. Uh, we have syssocket.h for, for various socket operations, iocontrol.h, uh, which allows us to control network devices. Linux can.h and Linux can rada h. These two are going to be used for socket can specifically. So now we can get started uh, with writing some code. So let's start with creating a main function. In this main function, I have two variables called sockfd and nbytes, and those will be useful later. Next, what we're going to need is a socket can address. So the socket uh, or socket address can data structure contains the can family and the can interface index. It also has a union that contains the transport um, protocol address information if you're going to use something like ISOTP. So next I'm going to include another data structure and this one is called the interface request. So the interface request data structure contains the interface name and a union with a variety of data structures and variables, but the one that we care about is the interface index. So next, uh, what we're going to need is a can frame local variable. So I will create one right here. The can frame contains the can ID, it contains the data length code, some padding, and then the data. Great, so uh, now we are ready to start setting up our program. The first thing uh, we're gonna do is create the can socket. So in order to do that, we are going to type the sock file descriptor equal to the socket API, and we're gonna be passing in protocol family can. This is gonna be a raw socket, and more specifically, it's gonna be a raw can socket. So I have some notes here that explain exactly uh, what this means. So a socket is an endpoint for sending and receiving data on a computer network. And uh, we're going to be using the CAN protocol family. Um, so the Linux kernel has various protocols that it can support in the networking layer, in the networking layer such as TCP, UDP. But for this, we're going to be using the CAN protocol. Uh, we are instructing it to create a raw socket, which just means we have more control over the socket and we're gonna be dealing with the headers and payloads ourselves. We're, we're asking it to create a CAN raw socket, which just means uh, we want access to raw CAN data rather than a more higher level socket, such as an ISOTP socket, which um, handles some of the transport layer uh, on its own. So we have the instantiation here. We're giving it this socket file descriptor and a quick check for whether or not there are any issues. So next, what we're gonna do 
is we're going to create the interface request. So the way we do that is with the following lines of code. So the uh, name of the CAN interface is CAN0, and we showed earlier that we set up CAN0 properly. The next, uh, and probably one of the most important lines of code, is IO control. So this is a system call, and we're giving it the socket file descriptor. We're giving it a constant uh, as such, and this constant stands for socket IO control get interface index. So what this means is uh, we are requesting the operating system to give us the index number of the CAN0 interface. And uh, so just so you know, um, the interface index is a unique number assigned to each network interface on the system. So there might be an ETH network interface or a, or a Wi-Fi interface and a CAN interface, and we're asking it, give us the interface for CAN0. So uh, IO control will actually populate this data structure, which is the interface request, with the appropriate interface index. So now that we have the interface index all set up, what we're gonna do is create the specific socket address. And the way we do that is with these lines of code. So the socket address, um, can family is going to be uh, set to this constant. So address family can socket address uh, can interface index is going to be set to uh, the interface request index, which we obtained from IO control. And we're finally ready to bind the socket file descriptor to the um, interface uh, that we have requested and set up here. So once we bind it, the, um, the socket should be uh, usable at this point. Uh, but if it isn't, we're going to um, set an error message and return. So at this point in the code, we can now start using the socket. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw a while loop in here. And in this while loop, um, we're going to do some can logging. So while one, let's read some can frames and print them out to the console. So here's the number of bytes uh, variable we defined at the top. We're using this uh, read socket function and we're giving it the, so the socket file descriptor, the address of the can frame uh, variable that we defined above, and the size of the can frame. So um, if the number of bytes read was uh, less than zero, then that indicates that there was an issue. So let's log an error message and we'll return uh, a bad return value. Uh, and then now let's, let's print out what we actually read. So we're gonna do a simple printf, received can frame with this ID. So frame.canID. Next, we're going to actually print the data. So for each byte in the can frame, let's print out uh, the data. And then we'll do a new line character so that we actually get you know, different frames on different lines. So there you have it. Uh, this is the code for our program. So what we should be able to do is save the file. And uh, now what we are gonna do is we're going to compile it. So we're gonna do GCC uh, custom can dump dot c and let's get an output file so custom can dump uh, as such and now for the moment of truth let's run our program and there it is so you can see here that we are actively logging data and uh, just for reference i will do the can dump uh, can zero one more time. And uh, you can compare the results that we're getting and they appear to be the same. So we have the can ID, which ends in 012. And then we have the data, which is uh, the same. So there you have it. We have effectively written our own can dump program 
and hopefully you gain some insight on how to use the Socket Can API. If you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much. Remember to like and subscribe and have a nice day.